Hi, my name is James, and today we're going to discuss the Bank of England's balance sheet again. Last time we discussed it in terms of interest expense versus interest income, and we discussed how post-2022, the interest expense exceeded the interest income, and the Bank of England was basically required to print up the difference. We talked about how the central bank's assets generate passive income or deflationary interest, and this is offset by the interest and excess reserve expense that the central bank pays out to all its reserves in the system. And what this does is basically it's inflationary and at a certain interest rate, especially when it's leveraged, it offsets the interest income and introduces more reserves into the system that it takes out. And this pushes the liabilities towards infinity and the assets towards zero, which can cause inflation or does. And this is offset by a deferred asset that the central bank uses basically to cover it up. So today we'll discuss the deferred asset, but mainly focus on the AFT or the asset side of the balance sheet, the realized and unrealized losses. So last time I looked at the interest differential and we discussed how basically the losses at total over these last three years, since 2022, tally up to about 81 billion and that the central bank needs to print up or come up with a way to get this money. And really it's coming from the treasury or the taxpayers. And we're gonna discuss this number here, which is much bigger and much more scary. So the first thing we're gonna discuss is basically the Bank of England conducting quantitative easing or printing out money to buy gilts at a premium. So they pay more than face value from commercial banks. And basically over 10 years or so, or whatever the duration, usually about, the average is about 15 for the Bank of England, they'll basically get paid interest. And then they'll, when the bond matures or the gilt matures, they'll get their last bit of income plus passive QT. But if you notice something, they overpaid. So they paid 485 billion and only got back 404 billion. And this was about a 17% loss. This interest income cannot go towards basically offsetting this cost because that's going towards offsetting the interest on excess reserve expense, We're looking at it in terms of a total loss. And what I want you to take away is that this loss is fixed. It doesn't change. So passive quantitative tightening is fixed. And basically what it means is when they go out and buy at a premium, these face value bonds or gilts, the liabilities basically equal the assets. So the reserves created are 485 billion and the total assets are 485 billion. But at the end, when they as the passive QT finishes at 10 years, and the bond matures, they get four, only 404 back. So there still leaves 81 billion reserves left that need to be removed from the system. Otherwise they begin to compound at the interest and excess reserve expense. So now we have also hard quantitative timing. So this is different. So basically Bank of England does the same thing, quantitative easing, they go out and buy at a premium 485 billion face value bonds, so 404 billion but they sell early called hard QT. So they go out and sell instead of waiting until it matures, they sell early. What the problem is, is they're selling at a discount because when they're buying, they're buying when yields are very low and as yields spike, the value of these bonds decrease very quickly. And this basically is a market rate or the market value. So face value might be 404 billion, but now when you go to sell it, you're only getting 308 billion back. And the problem is this is a variable loss. So basically wherever this yield goes, the yield goes higher, the losses increase, the yields go down, the losses do decrease. And basically what this means is, so you have 485 billion outlay and same amount for reserves being created, but now you're only getting 308 billion back and there's still an excess of 177 billion reserves in the system, which is a big problem because they compound interest, right? So during COVID, the Bank of England went out and purchased a ton of guilt, as we can see here and they basically explode the central bank balance sheet. They purchased at a premium $485 billion worth and got really a face value of $404 billion. The problem is that they purchased at the absolute highest price possible. They paid a premium on very low yielding bonds, yeah? And as yields reversed post COVID and went up, what happened was the market value of these gilts declined a huge amount, basically $178 billion worth, yeah? And this is what this deferred asset actually means, yeah? And basically, if all these assets are sold off and there will still be 178 billion reserves left over, and this is a huge problem because all these reserves collect compound interest. But the thing is, not all these bonds are going to be sold. And obviously, if these yields come down, this market value is going to go up. And so it's not really good. Look, we need to look at what was actually locked in, what was actually sold. So what was actually sold was an estimated passive QT total of 150 billion and an estimated hard QT total of 60 billion since 2022. But this means is 
the estimated passive QT total losses equals 150 billion times the 17 fix that we talked about and equals 25 billion. The estimated hard QT losses is about approximately 60 billion times 30, which is about 18 billion. So you add the two together, you get 43 billion total excess reserves in the system. And plus the interest differential, this comes to a big total, yeah? But so far since 2022, the basically the British government has paid 94 billion from taxpayers towards paying this off. And this leaves only about 30 billion and really a 4% interest on excess reserve expense. And you might be wondering to yourself, if this is over three years, it's not really that much, is it? It's only really increasing by 10 billion a year. And it seems pretty manageable, yeah? So pre-2022, we spoke about how the central bank ran a profit and that this meant that basically the interest differential would offset the realized losses and lead to basically cash being remitted to the treasury or taxpayers receiving cash from the central bank to help with funding tax bills. But since 2022, both these now work together to increase the number of reserves in the system or increase the cost that taxpayers need to bear. And this is a big problem because both these go in the same direction when interest rates go higher. So as yields go higher, the hard QT losses increase. They go from, what was it, 30% before to 60%. And also the interest on excess reserve gets bigger. So both these, both this gets bigger, the interest differential, and both the realized losses get bigger. And the cost of tax pass actually goes up pretty quickly because both these are working in the same direction. Yep, 131 billion. And this is compounding if it's not paid off instantly each year.